live from Midtown Manhattan, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2017. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem sponsors. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Big Data NYC. It's where all the actions have us. Our fifth year doing our own event here in New York City. The hashtag is Big Data NYC. Also in conjunction with Strata Hadoop. It used to be called Hadoop World, then Strata Hadoop. Now it's called Strata Data as they try to grope to, the, to where the future's going to be. A lot of hype over there, a lot of action. Um, but here is we do the intimate interviews and the stories. I'm John Furrier, co-host of theCUBE with Emma McGratton, who is the Senior Vice President of Engineering at Actian. Um, great to have you on. Thanks for having me. We love having everyone from Ireland, because the accents always <laughs> get great, get traction, so thank, <laughs> I appreciate you coming on. Uh, have a beer later at the pub, but love, the, love uh, New York's got a lot of great Irish pubs. Uh, in all seriousness, we've had Actian on before. Um, Mike Hawkins has been on. We had Jeff Beeson on yesterday, giving us the marketing angle of you know, um, hybrid data that you guys are doing. What's under the hood? Because you know, Actian has a lot of technology in their portfolio through how you guys had your growth strategy, but now as the world wants to bring it together, you're seeing some real critical trends. Right. A lot of application development yep. where data is important. Huge amount of security challenges. People are trying to build out and build, bring IT uh, security out of IT. And then you got all this data governance stuff. Uh, that's just on the top line. Then you right. got IoT. <laughs> So there's a, people are busy with the, their, their plates are full and data is the center of it. So what are you guys doing to bring all the Actian together? That's a great question, perfect question for Actian. So we have in Actian a uh, number of products in the portfolio and we believe that um, best fit product, right? So if you're doing something like graph database, it doesn't make sense to put a vector in Hadoop solution against that. So um, we've got the right fit technology for what we're doing. And for IoT, we've got an embedded database that's the smallest 30 megs, right? So I've got PowerPoint files that are bigger than this database that will just, you put it in a device, set it, it can run for 20 years, you never have to touch it. Um, but all that data that's been generated, typically you're generating it because you want to, at some point to be able to analyze it. And what we've got in the portfolio in Vector in, and Vector in Hadoop is the ability to take that data from uh, the IoT sources and perform very high speed analytics on that. So um, the, the products that, uh, that we have within the portfolio are focused around data integration, so pulling data into a, uh, an environment where you're going to perform analysis or otherwise um, operationalize that data. Um, data management, uh, so that's uh, a lot of our customers are just doing um, CRM, ERP, applications on our um, on our product and platforms uh, and then the analytics is where I get really excited because there's so much happening in the analytics world in terms of new types of applications being built in terms of real-time requirements and in terms of security and governance that you're talking about uh, and referencing your question um, and we've got a unique solution that can address all of those areas in our vector and Hadoop products so it's interesting that uh, that we see the name Hadoop coming out of the uh, the show this week because we see that the uh, the focus on Hadoop kind of uh, moving to the background and where the real Focus is around the data and not, not so and the much business on the value. I hate to sound cliche it. about outcomes, but you know we were joking on the cube yesterday and and kind of kind of can't coin the term outcomes as a service, which is kind of a, a goof on the whole. That's about the outcomes, uh, which is you know a cliche in, in tech, but that really is the truth. I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> you got a business goal, but the role of data now in real time is is key. You're seeing people yeah. want real time, not real time response with old data. Right. They want the real data. So people are starting to look at data as a really instrumental part of the development process. Similar to what DevOps did with infrastructure as code, people want data to be like code. Exactly. And that is a hard architectural challenge. So, you know, if you go into a, your customer base, what do you guys tell them? And I always know the hybrid cloud is the marketing message, but you know, I have challenges, I'm the CXO, I'm the CDO, I'm the CIO, I'm the CFO, COO, whatever the yeah. person making these huge sweeping operational cost decisions and and revenue is, what's the architecture? Because that's what people are working on right now. And how do you present that? Right, so uh, we recognize the fact that everybody's got a very distributed environment. And, and part of the message around hybrid data is that data can be generated pretty much any place. You, you may be generating data in the cloud with your own custom applications. You may be using um, uh, salesforce.com or NetSuite or whatever. And uh, you've got your on-premise uh, sources of, of data generation. And what we provide in Actian is the ability to access all of that data in real time and make it part part of the, uh, the application set that you're deploying that is going to be able to react in real time to changes. You don't want to be acting on yesterday's data because 
things have happened, things have moved on. So, so the importance of real time is not lost on Actian and, and all of the solutions that we bring together <laughs> enable that uh, real time analysis of uh, what's happening in every part of the environment. So it's hybrid in terms of the type of data that you're uh, working with, it's hybrid in terms of it could be generated in the cloud, in any cloud, um, or on premise, yeah. um, and being able to pull all of that together and perform real time analysis is, uh, is incredibly important to, um, to, to generating value from the data. And I want to get your thoughts on a, on a comment that I heard um, last night and then multiple times, but the same pattern. They don't get it. I mean, they, they could be the venture capitalist as part of the startup or the customer has, you know, oh, this is the way we do it. There's definitely things that are out there, silos, legacy things that are in, in environments. They're not going away and that's, we know that. But how do you go into a customer and saying, look, there's a whole new way of doing things right now. It's not necessarily a radical lift and shift or rip and replace, whatever word you want to use. Right. Mean, there's always a word that, that, that uh, you know, like rip and replace, we'll say lift and shift. It's the same thing, right? right. You don't want to do a lot of incremental operational, you know, um, wholesale changes, right. but you want to do incremental value now. How do you go in and saying, look, it, this is the way you want to think about real time in your architecture? Because I don't necessarily want to have to change my operational mindset for, say, Salesforce and all these different data sources. How do you guys uh, have that conversation? So Axion is, uh, is unique in that we have a customer base that goes back 20, 30 years. I personally will be acting in 25 years in December, right? So we've got customers that are running our, uh, I would like to call them legacy products, but they're products that are powering their business every day of the week. And um, we've also got incredibly innovative product that we're on the, the bleeding edge. And what we've done in our recent release of Actian X is to combine bleeding edge technology with this more mature and proven uh, technology. So in Actian X, you've got the uh, OLTP uh, database that, uh, that was Ingress and now got rebranded because it's got new capabilities. And then um, we've taken the, uh, the engine from our Actian Vector product and brought that into to Actian X so that you can do in real time analysis of your OLTP data and, uh, and react in real time to changes in the data. And it's interesting that you, s you talk about real time because um, it means different things to different people, yeah. right? So if you're talking to somebody doing risk analysis, real time is milliseconds. If you're talking to, uh, to some customers, you know, real time is yesterday's data and that's fine. And what we've done with Actian X is to provide that ability to, um, to, do, to determine for yourself what real time means to you and to provide a solution that enables you to respond in real time. Now bringing analytics into uh, what is a more traditional OLTP database and uh, kind of demonstrating for them some of the new capabilities it enables then opens up other opportunities for us. We can have conversations about maybe backing up that data set to the cloud. So somebody that may have been risk averse and not looking at cloud mm -hmm. all of a sudden is is looking at cloud, looking at analytics, and kind of opening up new opportunities for us, and new opportunities for them, right? Because yeah. the, the data, as they say, is the, the new oil, so. That's great, great, uh, and you guys have a good, good customer base to draw from, so you got to bring in the shiny new toy, but make it work with the existing. Exactly. So it sounds like you build like an abstraction layer that you're bolting on tech to, tech that was very useful and is useful yep. by adding it, by decoupling it with new software that adds value, that's the, this is it an abstraction layer that's of sorts? Uh, we don't think of it as an abstraction layer, but certainly yeah, one could think of it that way because um, it's, well yeah. It's let's a product, just, I mean yeah. basically, you basically take the old product and bring new stuff to it. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so I got to ask you about the, um, the trend around IoT, because IoT is one of those things right now that's super hype, I think it's going to be even more hype, but security has been a big problem, and, and I hear a lot of uh, CXs say, Kurt, certainly IoT is on the agenda. Industrial IoT is kind of the mm -hmm. low-hanging fruit, they go to that right. first, yeah. but no one wants to be the next Equifax, right? right? So there's a lot of security you know, stuff that causes that slow, and plus there's other things going on they got to take care of. Right. How do you guys talk about the security equation where you can come in and put in a reliable, workable solution and still make the customers feel like they're moving the ball down the field. So that's one of the benefits that we have of being in the industry for as long as we have. We have uh, a very deep understanding as to uh, what security requirements are and in terms of um, providing capabilities within the product to do things like uh, control who can access what data and to what degree. Can they update it? Can they only read it? Um, providing the ability to encrypt the data, right? So for, for many um, use cases, the, uh, the data is so sensitive that uh, you'd always want it encrypted when it's mm -hmm. stored. Uh, you'd want um, any traffic coming in and out of the environment to be encrypted. Um, being able to uh, audit everything that's happening in the environment, who's issuing what queries and for 
malware and to set alarms if something if somebody attempts to access data that they shouldn't be attempting to access. So taking all of those capabilities together, um, we're then able to look at things like GDPR, right? What are the requirements for you know, securing the data? And uh, we've got all of the capabilities within the product, and we've got the credibility because we've been doing this for 30 years, right? That that we can secure these environments. We can conform to the uh, the various standards and and mandates that are put in place for for data security. So we have a very strong story to What's tell. What's your position on GDPR? Obviously, that is super important. I mean, I call it the Y2K that actually has, is real because you have this compliance issues and you know there's a lot of obviously political things going on, but this is a real problem. People have to move fast on a solution. What do you guys offer there? So I think Equifax was a prime example of why GDPR is incredibly important, right? So for Actian, um, you know, I talked about the capabilities we provide with regard mm -hmm. to uh, to securing data and uh, secure access to that data. And when it comes to GDPR, a lot of it is around process. So what we're doing is guiding our customers and making sure that they have secure processes in place, that putting all of this smarts into the technology and then having somebody doing an offline backup on a CD that they leave on a seat on the train, right, um, which has in the past been a source of uh, data breaches, um, is, is an issue with process and not with technology. So we're helping with that and uh, well, helping well, and educating had our had some customers. VPN issues, but also, I mean, I haven't reported on this yet, but also I have confirmed that there was state actors involved, foreign actors oh, penetrating in through their franchise relationships. So in partnering in an open internet these days, you need to understand who the parties are, even if they're Absolutely. in the network. Absolutely, and that's why this uh, this whole idea of providing all of the capabilities required for data security, including auditing, who's who's coming in. So failed attempts to get into the system should be reported mm -hmm. as, as problems, and that's a capability that we have within the database. So, so you've been acting for 25 years. I did not know that's cool. Um, good folks over there, been, been to the office a few times. Um, I'm sure you got a good, healthy customer base, but for the folks that don't know Actian, what's the what's the pitch from your standpoint? Not, I mean, you got to have the marketing pitch, hybrid data, <laughs> I get that. Right. I mean, what should they know about you guys? What is the problem that you solve? What do you bring to the table? You know, from an engineering perspective, how do you differentiate? So my uh, primary focus is around high-speed analytics, right? Um, so Actian enables the fastest SQL access to data um, on Hadoop and off of Hadoop, proven through benchmarks. Um, so high-speed analytics is incredibly important, um, but for Actian, we're unique in having this 30-year uh, history where uh, we understand what it is to run 24-7 mission-critical operational databases. So, so Actian's known for products like Ingress, um, uh, like PSQL, um, and uh, being able to uh, to analyze data that's operationalized, um, but then also bringing in new data sources, because that's mm -hmm. where things are, are really going, that people want to choose the best application, whether it's in the cloud or on-premise, doesn't matter. It's the best application for their need. Um, and uh, being able to pull all of that data together and um, for operational purposes and for analytics purposes is incredibly important, and Actian enables all of that. And that's where the hybrid message, I think, is really clever and smart, because it kind of you get the consumption side and the creation side, and data integration isn't a project, it's real, you know, it just happens. So right. you want to enable that. And I think you see that would be a key benefit, certainly as, you know, whether these decentralized apps get more traction, you're going to start to see more immutable things, transactions happening, blockchain clearly points to, you know, that direction of the market where, right. hey, that's cool, distributed computing's been around for a while, but now decentralized, we know how to behave there. So uh, kind of, uh, we're seeing some apps that will probably be rewritten for that, but again, if architected properly, that shouldn't be a problem. Right, exactly. And we don't want anybody to have to rewrite apps. Right, <laughs> what we want to be able to do is to provide a platform where yeah. the data that you need is available. Yeah, the they're called D apps for decentralized apps. And it's a whole new wave coming. It's not being talked about here at the show. We are on it, obviously Silicon Angle uh, and Wikibon are on those trends as you know, we're riding the big wave. Okay, Emma, I want to ask you a final question. Um, kind of take your Actian hat off, put your, you know, your Irish techie hat <laughs> on, and let's get down and dirty on <laughs> what the main problem in the industry is right now. If you look back and kind of go to the balcony, if you will, look at the stage of the industry. I mean, obviously Hadoop is now in the background, it's an element of the bigger picture. We're seeing, we were commenting yesterday that these customers have these tool sheds of all these tools they bought, and they bought a hammer that wants to be a lawnmower, right? Uh, and so like, these things, it's just like they have their tool, platforms are being pitched at them, there's a lot of confusion. What's the main problem that the industry's trying to solve? If you look at it, if you can put the, the dots together, what is the big problem that yeah. needs to be solved that the industry should be solving? So I think it's that data is every place, right? And there is not a whole lot of discipline around um, 
corralling that and putting um, security around it, being able to deploy uh, security policies across data regardless of, of where it's uh, deployed um, or sourced. Um, so I think that's probably the biggest challenge is, is bringing compute to the data and pulling all of that together. And that's the challenge that we're addressing. And so the technology. unification, if you will, people use that word, oh, unifying the data. But what does that actually mean? You guys call it hybrid data, which means right. you have some flexibility, you need it. Right. All right, cool. Emma, thanks so much for coming on Cube. Really appreciate it. Congratulations on your success. And again, you guys got to a good spot. You got a broad portfolio. You're bringing Indeed. it together with hybrid data. Uh, best of luck, we'll keep in touch. Emma McCracken here, the Senior Vice President of Engineering at Actian here on the Cube. More live coverage here in New York City from the Cube's coverage of Big Data NYC after this short break.